hey, we're working on the Monte Carlo lab or on the simulation step. So here I have my mean and standard deviation of my radius and height values. Um, and we found those in a previous video in a previous section of the lab. So you can click back and find that if you haven't found your means and standard deviations yet. Um, so that's the data I have. And I also have the start to my simulation, my Monte Carlo simulation. I have the headers and I have the beginning of the first line, but now I'm not really there. I have this error and we'll see why it's there. So we're gonna end up having a lot of trials. So we have a column for trials. The point of the Monte Carlo simulation is to run it very many times and ultimately find an average and a standard deviation. Um, so we'll have a long list of radii and a long list of height. And then there'll be those two values on each, for each trial will be calculated for a volume. We'd like to pull our radii and heights from the standard D, from the normal distribution that we believe they're a part of, and that's described by their mean and standard deviation. So, if we want to randomly pick values from these normal distributions, we have to use a function to do that, and Google Sheets has a nice function built in for us. It's called this norm inverse, norm inv. So we start our function with an equal sign all the way at the left. And this norm inverse function takes three arguments. It takes, the first argument is where in the distribution. Um, and we'll, I'll talk about that in a second. The second argument is the mean and the third is the standard deviation. So the second and third argument will define the normal distribution. So this first argument, where in the distribution, if we input randomly numbers from zero to one over and over and over again, we'd find that 68% um, of our radii would be within one standard deviation, 95% would be within two standard deviations, and 99.7 would be within the three standard deviations of the outputs of our random radii because we're picking from this normal distribution. That's the point of using norm inverse because we're using a normal distribution. So to make this functional, we'd like there to be a random choice from zero to one. So let's get that argument out in text and let's put what we need. So Google Sheets has its own function for random numbers between zero and one. And that's just this rand with open and close parentheses. For a mean uh, and standard deviation, we're going to characterize the normal distribution. So let's input our radius mean. I have them up top. Let's just copy and paste. There's a reason why I'm not um, just clicking. I don't want to do it that way. Let's get out of this cell and we'll go to the mean and copy. We'll go back here and we can put in our value. And now we'll go back for standard deviation and copy. And now we'll paste it here. Awesome. And now we come out with some ra random radius on that distribution. The reason why we're not clicking cells to add them to this formula is because we're going to want to drag it downwards this way. And because from what we know about um, dragging formulas, if it depends on this square up here, at every next iteration, the cell that it's calculating with will go down. So we don't want that to happen. We, wanna, we want these numbers to be hard-coded in. So that's what we're doing. Um, let's do the same thing for the height. So we want the equals norm inverse. And then we want the same random. And now we want the mean. So it's going to tell us we have an error until once we have all the arguments input. Enter. Awesome. So those are the only two functions that we're going to use for the simulation. We're using the norm inverse 
and the ran function. So go ahead and do some research on those and play around with them. You can figure out uh, more intuitively how they act. So here we have, now we can have a long list of heights randomly selected from our normal distribution. And if we want to calculate volume, then we know that volume equals pi r squared. So we can use pi, which is just pi, open close parentheses. And then we want to multiply by r squared. So we can multiply by r twice. And then we want to multiply by the height. So that's height. Awesome. And we're clicking the cells for this one such that when we drag down, we're calculating volume with the next set, the next trial of numbers. Awesome. Great. So now we can just drag down. The only thing that we can't drag down so far is this trial because we want it to go one, two, three, four. So we can do something sneaky here. We can use induction. We can have equals in the cell above plus one. So now every time this goes, it's going to look at the cell above it and it's going to add one. And now we have trials. So we can drag down each column by itself, but um, we can actually just drag a row and bring the whole row down. And that's trials 1 to 14. So that's great. Um, this comes out to be really easy. I'm going to finish my simulation with 100 trials and have 100. Um, I'm going to have a list of length 100 for volumes. Drag it all the way down. How many is that? 94. Come down a little bit farther. Oh, one more. And now I have a hundred results for volume. So you'll notice every time I drag one of these down, all of them change. Every time the page updates, um, the rand function will be a new random value. So every time you refresh the page, you might realize you might find that all your volumes change, but that's okay because they should still belong to the same distribution. And as long as we use enough trials, the dis the distribution should be consistent. So I used a hundred trials, and that's not really nearly enough to come out with a con consistent distribution. For your Monte Carlo syst uh, for your Monte Carlo simulation. We're, we're instructing you to do 3,000 trials. You'll be able to pull a meaningful mean value and a meaningful standard deviation value from that, such that you'll have propagated your errors <clears throat> using a Monte Carlo simulation. So that concludes this video.